A little over eight months ago, I started this 286 on breadboards, and I've progressed pretty well. I now have this system board PCB. I have add-in cards for audio, video, and uh, an interface to get to a CF card. I can load up FreeDOS and run my own C++ applications in FreeDOS. As I look forward, I know I want to start, start to learn and experiment with other processors in the Intel lineup. And it seems like the 386SX might be a, a good next natural step for me. And so I've ordered up this little PCB that I designed that hopefully will let me drop a 386SX into my 286 build and take advantage of some of those features that come with the 386SX. But I want to go beyond that. And at some point, you know, how do I build a system that supports 32-bit? Uh, for example, the 386DX might be a great system at some point for me to build if I can manage that. Now, one of the things I run into or I ran into with the 286 build is that there were times where I would have to order up PCBs and I would go through you know, revisions of PCBs maybe fairly quickly. And that's a pretty slow process to order a PCB and then get it shipped to me. Or it's very expensive on the shipping side and, and maybe even still slow then. But if I want to just kind of order things at uh, an affordable shipping rate, uh, I know it's going to take me three weeks, four weeks every time I order a version of a PCB. And that was my experience with the 286, and I expect it will be the same as I get into a 386DX because there are some some pretty notable differences, which I'm going to talk about here coming up as far as how it, it's not just a real simple upgrade to my system like maybe this 386SX might be. But I'm going to continue down the path of my 286 build that I've been working on. Uh, it might be running a 386SX instead of a 286 moving forward if this works. I'll continue to build that out and see what I can do with that system and the hardware that I have. But I also want to start working on that next core for my next system, which is, again, going to be a 386DX. In this video, really just kicking off, I might consider this video number one of my 386DX series. I don't know where it's going to take me. I'm hoping that at some point I will, will be able to take the system board you see in front of you with a 286 and have it running a 386DX with 32-bit data and address bus. Now if I look at the 386DX for a minute, you know there's a lot of pins there. That's a 132 pin package that it's using. So I'm going to have to deal with all of those signals and anything else that is different for a 386DX than what I have in my 286 build. And so if I look at this, this is a bus control logic diagram. I think I pulled this out of the hardware design guide for the 8386. You know, the very first thing I'm looking at is the processor on the far left, and then there's this 82384, and that's a clock generator and reset, much like the 82284 in my 286 build. So I went out and looked to see, you know, can I source that? Where could I find those? And I can't find them. And if anybody knows where I can source them, uh, please let me know. But it seems like these are pretty much non-existent for all the searches I've done. I really can't find them. So somehow I'm going to have to deal with that and say, okay, if I don't have this uh, standard 82384 that I can just drop in, and I don't think I can just go grab a 284, the 286 versions of, of this, and drop it in, I'm going to have to build my own logic to do that. And that's fine. You know, when I started this uh, 286 build on breadboard, I, I did that. I had actually built my own you know, equivalent of that, maybe not entirely full functionality, but enough to get the system up and running before going to Intel's 82284. Anyways, I can't source that chip that I, I, I can find, at least. I, I'm looking and not find it anywhere. Something else I notice is that a lot of the logic here, the control logic, they're putting into these PALs or programmable logic arrays. And so the design is basically go grab a couple PALs, here's some code to put on them, and use that instead of having some off the shelf, you know, uh, let's say bus controller type of a chip. And I can see other things on here. There's some other just basic glue logic and uh, stuff like that with uh, maybe a, a, a demultiplexer on here. 
or a decoder, these 74139s. I go off to the right and I can see that there are, in this case, they're showing four separate static RAM chips now. So there's no longer a low byte, high byte, because it's four bytes of data that we're going to have to work with. And then there's going to be this, uh, you know, EEPROM, or in my case, flash memory that I'm going to use for my BIOS. I'm still going to have an interrupt controller. It looks like that's the same. Uh, I rolled a different approach for a timer. I'm using a VIA instead of this 8254. And that's fine. I've got, if I back up just a little bit on this slide, uh, we have the same old uh, transceivers and latches. You know, that's just all pretty much the same. The big things that are different, you know, as I look at this, is this 82384 that I'm going to have to build a replacement for, and then the logic that goes in these PLAs, and then know that I'm going to have to work with four memory chips instead of two, etc. So if I look through all of this stuff right here, I'm hoping to actually put that functionality all inside of, I'm going to use PSOX instead of uh, these uh, previous, you know, this uh, PLAs. I'm not going to use PLAs. I'm going to use PSOX. And I think I'm going to actually set up a little dev board and just start experimenting with this. Now, luckily, uh, Intel does provide, you know, the code that you would put on those two PALs. And so I can go pull that up and I'll have to figure out how do I implement comparable functionality in my in my PSOX, but I think I can work through that. I'm hoping I can work through that. And if I can't, then I'll have to just go get some some PLAs or, or PLDs or find a different way to do it, whatever the case may, might be. But I know I want to have a whole bunch of experimenting and learning to do as I go through this code and try to get that working. Um, so what I'm going to do is order up a prototype board, something that I can just start experimenting with. And I've laid that out and I've routed it. I need to do a little bit more cleanup from what's shown here before I order it. Uh, but essentially, you're going to see that I'll, I will place a uh, 386DX here, and I have those in route. I'm going to use a PIC, the same as I was before, a priority interrupt controller. I'm going to use this versatile interface adapter down here to do all my SPI communications. I have data transceivers. I need four of those because I now have 32 bits of data. Address latches, I need another one from what I had on my previous 286 build because now I'm going to go up to 32-bit addressing. And then I've also got control latching down here. I have two chips or two places here that you're going to see that I'll put in uh, basically my flash memory. So I'll, I'll have enough there that I can basically do everything I'm doing today on my 286. And then for the RAM, I have this set up with four of them. So there's uh, four bytes of data. So all four of these would be used together. And maybe as I go forward, I'll look for different arrangements of memory. Uh, maybe I can get something that, um, I don't know, as I look at everything that maybe gives me uh, 16 bits of data or 32 bits of data from a single chip, uh, it does seem like I get into very large packages uh, for those chips uh, beyond what maybe I'm ready to get into. But anyways, I'm going to start out with these four static RAMs, a pair of flash, and I'm going to use three PSOCs on this dev board uh, because I, there's that much work to happen. And so that's where I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time is just inside the code for these PSOCs, trying to get that all figured out. You know, I got my normal, uh, this is kind of a power on delayed reset type of chip. Uh, I have a single uh, inverter here. I, I only need one gate out of it right now, but I'll have that there if I need to do some other inverting. I do have up to the upper right this nano so that I can write uh, debug information to my PC, and I'm going to have a nano so that I can support keyboard, mouse, or at least keyboard. That's really all I care about to start. But what I'm hoping is I could get this basic board running and learn through that. So I'm going to have to figure out all the code for these PSOCs. I'm going to have to, you know, write out to this debug nano instead of writing out to VGA, which that's fine. Uh, but that'll at least let me see, can I get this 386 working correctly? And hopefully have a keyboard input so that I can do some just basic type of testing and, and see if, you know, can I get to all four bytes as I, I do this 32 bit uh, type of work.
Uh, so maybe this is you know, video one of this uh, 386DX type of build. And like I said, the 286 is still going to be my primary thing that I'm working on. And one of the reasons is there's just going to be large delays. And, and when, for example, when I order this PCB compared to the time I get it back. So I'm hoping to get this uh, cleaned up here maybe in the next week or so and get something ordered up that I can just start experimenting with. But if I can have this as a platform, I can start doing some of this PSOC work. Uh, then I can see if I can get all these different signals that I need to have running uh, working in the 386DX. And again, if I back up, you know, a lot of those signals is the type of stuff that would be done in these PALs. You know, so I've got to figure out, you know, how do I generate all of these uh, signals from these couple of PALs, plus make sure I get my clock and reset and all of that stuff working the way it should. Uh, and all of this other, everything that I have marked here, uh, circled, I'm going to try to get into my PSOC. So it's really going to be some PSOCs. It's going to be the processor over here on the left. And I'm going to have my, my latches and my transceivers. I've got that RAM in the lower right, a pair of uh, chips for my flash. I've got the interrupt controller on there, and I'm going to use the VIA for this timer. The design that I've got here actually has a fair amount of functionality to it. It just doesn't have any ISA slots, so I'm not going to do any VGA output on this. Uh, and of course, I'm not going to get to read from a CF card uh, if I want to try to load up FreeDOS or something like that. This, this is not intended to take me that far. But if I get to the point where I can run run code and, and send it out through my serial output, uh, that would be great. And I just see if I can get the 32-bit aspect of this maybe up and running. And I don't know what I don't know yet. So as I get into this, I'm sure I'm going to find out that there's uh, other very notable differences that I'm going to have to work with. And if I can get the basic 386 system up and running, I assume it, it also comes up in real mode. Uh, see what I can do as far as just validating that these signals are working. Uh, then I can get back to adding in some ISA slots, video card, CF card, and maybe eventually get to the point where I can load up uh, free DOS. Uh, but that's where I'm at and just thought I would share this real quick. So if you're interested in a 386DX and uh, want to follow along, I will try to uh, treat that as a separate series. I know there's going to be overlap though from the 286 to the 386SX to the 386DX. A lot of what I'm doing applies to all three. And so I'll, I'll do my best to kind of uh, differentiate the 386DX stuff from the SX or the 286 type of work. And like I said, I'll keep working on the 286 build, probably running the 386SX processor, uh, but uh, that will be my primary system I'm going to continue to build on while I'm on the side, kind of working this 386DX, uh, hopefully forward little by little. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be a slow process.